A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week, on Easter Sunday, I read to you from the Gospel of Mark. Today, we're back in John, so I think before we move on, we need to catch up just a little bit. On Easter morning, in the Gospel of John, Mary, Peter, and the disciple Jesus loved discovered the empty tomb. Peter and the other disciple left, but Mary remained weeping. Jesus appeared to Mary, who didn't recognize him at first. And the final verse before our selected text for today, John 20, 18, is this. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. So now jump to the portion of the gospel that we just heard. It begins... When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, we are to understand that it's still Easter Sunday when today's story begins. Mary Magdalene saw Jesus in the morning, and now it's evening of the very same day. Makes you wonder what the disciples have been doing all day, doesn't it? You might suspect that they spent the day rejoicing. Mary has seen Jesus, but it doesn't seem like it. The gospel text says they were afraid, hiding behind closed doors when Jesus joined them there. And now we need to look more closely because it wasn't just that Jesus showed up and showed them his wounds. Something really important happened here beyond show and tell. We can't simply imagine what it looked like. We need to listen. Jesus said to the disciples, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Y'all, this is a big deal. Jesus said he was sending them. He breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit. We're maybe more familiar with the Acts version of this, flames of fire on the day of Pentecost. But in John's telling... The Holy Spirit comes directly from Jesus on the very day of the resurrection. Mary Magdalene saw Jesus in the morning, and in the evening, Jesus sends the disciples as he has been sent and gives them the Holy Spirit so they can get to work. And so it begs the question, if Jesus sent them, if they had the Holy Spirit, What were they doing, still sitting in that room a week later? We think of the gospel story we heard today as the story about Thomas. A lot of scholars, writers, preachers have done a lot of work to clear Thomas, to rename him, to reclaim him. So we will stop thinking of him as doubting Thomas and instead think of him as Thomas the faithful questioner, Thomas the scientist. And I agree wholeheartedly. To think of Thomas as a doubter is really unfair. But I think even Thomas, the faithful questioner, doesn't tell the whole story. Thomas isn't a doubter or even a questioner. He's a truth teller, and he should be recognized and remembered as such. So let's review. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus came by on Easter night, out for a walk, running an errand? How long was he gone? Did he miss Jesus only by a few minutes or a few days? The gospel doesn't say. What it does say is that when he got back, the others told Thomas, and Thomas didn't believe them. Why not? I wonder if it's because the disciples weren't acting like Jesus had really come. We don't know exactly how long Thomas was gone, but we do know that a week later, They're still behind closed doors. They aren't doing anything different. They've had the Holy Spirit for a whole week. They've been sent out, and yet they were still sitting behind the door. Maybe Thomas's response doesn't have anything to do with doubt or belief. Maybe he was just naming what he was seeing. Really? Jesus was here? And he said those things? And he showed you his hands and his side? And... Y'all are still just sitting here? I guess Jesus is going to have to come convince me himself because you 
aren't very convincing. Now, I think it's important to be fair to the rest of the disciples, too. I'm not sure that their inactivity is faithful, faithlessness as much as they just really didn't know what to do, how to begin. They were in hiding because they were afraid. And it wasn't a baseless fear. The Roman authorities and those trying to avoid trouble with Rome might have decided to rid themselves of all Jesus' followers in order to thoroughly squash the Jesus movement. And that was a real threat. Based on what we know of the disciples throughout the Gospels, we shouldn't really be surprised that Jesus has given them instructions that they don't fully understand and that they don't really respond to. And it isn't because they aren't faithful or because they aren't smart. They've been through a trauma. Their lives are still in danger. And this is all brand new to them. And Jesus, their leader, was killed, was resurrected, came and spoke to them, but has also gone again. He isn't there to walk them through what to do next. The disciples are traumatized and afraid. They've experienced the risen Christ and been, Christ and been given the Spirit, but they don't know what to do with that. I think I can be understanding of the fact that they've experienced something extraordinary and don't know how to put it into words or actions yet. And since they can't truly explain, they can't convince Thomas. Thomas isn't convinced, but he does still choose to stay with his friends. He doesn't decide they've lost their minds and go off on his own. This is faithful. And so, a week later, when Jesus does come again, this time, Thomas is there. And unlike the other disciples, Thomas knows how to respond. Thomas, the truth teller, gives Jesus a name that no other disciple has called him my Lord and my God. Jesus had been called the Son of God, Lord, Messiah, but before this declaration by Thomas, he had never, ever been called God. Thomas recognized something new and named what he saw. And Thomas was changed. Thomas should help us recognize that Easter Sunday is meant to change us. If Easter happens and we're still sitting in our locked rooms, afraid to go outside, we're missing something. The disciples couldn't even convince someone who already knew and trusted them. How do we convince others, maybe even people we don't really know, to love Jesus and to follow him? We have to act like we believe in the resurrection. We have to do what Jesus sent his disciples to do. That means we go be a part of the world showing the world what love and forgiveness look like. It means taking risks to further the gospel. It means looking forward rather than looking back. Y'all, the pandemic isn't behind us, but it is time to start making plans, not how to get back to all the things we were doing, but how to be the church that Christ is calling us to now. Now, before you get nervous, Please hear me say that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to do all new and all different stuff. I just want to get go back out of our vocabulary and get go forward into it. The celebration of Easter is the celebration of a new creation. Theologically, we don't think of Easter as happening on the first day of the week. Instead, it's the eighth day. It isn't about going back to the beginning. It's the beginning of something new. This Easter, perhaps more than any other Easter in recent history, we're faced with a special opportunity to consider the eighth day. Consider how we move forward as a new post-pandemic church. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. and Feel the breath of God on your face. The Holy Spirit has been given to you so you can love and forgive and invite others to do the same. Let's go forward. Thanks be to God.